Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Um, good afternoon, good afternoon comrades. Uh, my message is very simple. Um, Honorable Dr. Aaron Mwanz has delivered a message from the province. We have seen that uh, anyone is either arrested for hate speech because they're from the east or the northern part of this country. Ima president a eche chima. Mupangi bantu kuti banghale ngande. Ngande ndikamuti. Ukakatema kokulasa. Ukakakwera kokulasa. Musa pange ngande president. Musa pange ngande mubantu. Ngande yulu yulasa ukaitema ukaikwera yulasa. A president HH there is no way Kungo who was killed in northwestern province and the people from northwestern province are in Lusaka and JJ has disappeared. Mr. President, if at all we the people of eastern province have committed any crime against yourself, tell us what to do. If it needs us to give you keto, to apologize, we shall do it, but not at the expense of playing with the life of J.J. Banda. Mr. President, this is not a call on Jack Mwimbo. This is a call on to yourself and your office. You cannot be preaching peace when you go to Brussels and say instability anywhere in the world is instability everywhere, and yet you are doing something else. Mr. President, We've heard statements from your cadres declaring southern province a no-go zone area for some of us. If that's the case, we shall also declare eastern province a no-go area for your tribesmen and women. Yeah. If you are going to go this route, Mr. President, let us do it. Let the northerners be in the north. We easterners will be in the east. You southerners be in, in the south. We can no longer continue, Mr. President, to live in a country that has lived 60 years after independence. The worst of the patriotic front, we never witnessed a member of parliament being abducted. The worst of the patriotic front, we never saw a member of parliament's residence being bent down. You at your best, member of parliament has disappeared. At your best, at your methodical, a house has been bent down. And we know there is a list. Mr. President, in case you do not know, the people you give these instructions to have families and information is filtering. We know Binwa is next. I am next. But get this very loud and clear. You can come for me. My children will come and revenge. You are planting a very bad seed. This country needed to heal, especially that we have celebrated 60 years as an independent state. But it seems it's a seed of vengeance that you are planning and are planting, Mr. President. This is not a message. Let's not sugarcoat issues of saying Inspector General of Police, Jack Mwimbu, Bruce Kanema. This is a call on the president. How many people do you want to go? If you want to kill us, Mr. President, we can come to community house and shoot us than tormenting our families. Let our families know that we've been assassinated by the state. Let our families know 
that you've given instructions to wipe us out. We, the world has experienced genocide before. The world has experienced a holocaust. What, why can't we learn from the ugly side of history? Mr. President, please, please, Mr. President, if you want us to die, let it be so. But don't torment our families. Let our families know that we are dead or alive. Give us our JJ, whether dead or alive. If he's dead, we shall know where to bury him. Please, give us our brother back. I thank you. Uh, next to be Honorable Member Fonkana, Honorable Binwa Mfundu. Do I need to start? Yes, please. You are live. Please proceed. Um, fellow citizens, um, I traveled yesterday from the Copper Belt to come and uh, stand in solidarity with uh, fellow colleagues who are here in regards to the abduction of our friend and brother, Honorable JJ. I have spent most of my morning up to the afternoon with a family. We've been moving from one police station to the other, uh, hopefully to get um, you know, information from what the police have gathered so far. Um, I want to state here, colleagues who may be following this conversation, that uh, the family is still holding strong, hoping that uh, the state, through the police, can do their job. Um, except we are getting agitated because there's not been any single update so far as to what the police have done in regards to the investigations. I had a conversation with the Minister of Home Affairs and challenged him. There is no way under this earth that a member of parliament would have disappeared 24 hours and there's no single communication from the state. I think that all of you colleagues, uh, fellow citizens, you are aware that JJ is not just an ordinary citizen. JJ is a senior member of society, is a state asset. And so one such a member disappearing means that um, the state must own this matter. And owning this matter must mean, must involve the state updating frequently the citizens on what they are doing, what has happened. And so our apprehension at the moment is a fact that the state has remained very quiet. Now, when there is a void in information, people will speculate because you wish to know again, colleagues, that um, we know some state-owned or state-run you know, apparatus, media apparatus, are carrying stories. All of you will agree with me that Kosue is run by people that are in state house. The watchdog is run by people that are in state house. If you follow these media platforms, you will see them creating a narrative. <laughs> So to us as a common people, we know that the state is speaking through these platforms because the people who are running these platforms are from state house. So if the state finds it convenient to be speaking to us through readers in these otherwise state-run media houses, why are they failing to address the nation? Then again, it is very convenient that you have in a so-called country that has gotten rid of uh, cadres, a horde of cadres addressing or addressing press briefings, intimidating citizens, and you have the entire police doing nothing. Take a look on social media and see how many press conferences or briefings have been held by young people from the north, young people from the south, all of whom are agitating citizens being sorted one by one. And for those of you who believe this is propaganda, I am not in the business of propaganda myself. This is something that you can get on any social platform you open just now. So what sort of a society is it that we are creating where a particular horde of citizens would 
hold a press conference, insult citizens, threaten to abduct, threaten to deal with citizens, and the next day, <coughs> citizens are beginning to, to disappear. And you think that we cannot put two and two together. You are aware, citizens, that a lumpen from the Copper Belt, the, the youth chairman for UPND on the Copper Belt, threatened me for merely speaking out on issues affecting this, this nation. Nothing has been done. And you think that we can sit and smile. Let me be very honest here. We may look like we are stupid or foolish. We are not. Make no mistake. And I want to say this very, very politely to all of you who may be following this conversation. Some people want to make a mistake to think that this country belongs to UPN. It doesn't. It belongs to the Zambian people. And I can guarantee you, if the intention burning Jin Senga's house, abducting JJ is meant to intimidate us, we are not such a people who get intimidated. I don't know about you guys. I don't get intimidated. I don't get intimidated. And if the UPND, if the state by their reluctancy, if the police by their inertia not to say anything or to deal with these lumpens that are on the leash threatening citizens, thinks that they are creating order in this country, there will be disorder. That I can guarantee you. Because we will not sit and be threatened in our own country. We will not sit and see our brothers disappearing in our own country. There will be a time when we'll be forced to begin to defend ourselves. And you know in defense, the, the level depends on the aggression. If those lumpens will come with knives, they'll find us with knives. If they'll come with guns, they'll find us with guns. Now, this is not a threat. This is a promise to all of you. Enough is enough, colleagues. We have been independent for 60 years. We have never seen a member of parliament being abducted, let alone you leave a fake note. You could not even carefully to check what JJ's handwriting is, and you want us to believe like we are idiots that JJ has killed himself. Honestly speaking, colleagues, I just want to appeal for introspection. Those of you who have abducted JJ, we are giving you time to think through this act. JJ has a family. If you want us, the young people, to stay away from politics, tell us. We can think about it. But you must know that we have got family. You're putting our families in anguish, thinking daily, you know, worrying daily over our lives. It's not fashionable anymore. And I want to appeal to all of you citizens, this is not a time to begin to marry and, and create innuendos and propagandas to, dis, to, to swell people to believe JJ is capable of committing suicide. We are not such a gullible people anymore. We can read between the lines and we understand what is going on. My appeal to the state through the head of state, President Naka in the Ichlema, please let us stop this madness. It is getting out of hand. It's not fashionable anymore. We are trading on a very dangerous path. I don't like issuing threats, but I know the outcome of these acts may be very dangerous for this country because we are capable of protecting ourselves. We'd like to see JJ come back. Please summon your conscience and do the right thing by releasing JJ. It's not too late. I thank you. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.